Amen. All right, let's begin. Let's pray. Precious Father, okay. you love us very much. Yes. We give you thanks for calling us to look out for the wind. Lord, we enter into the wind and we allow your wind to take us to high places. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Jesus, without you, we can do practically nothing. Yes. Holy Spirit, we can do nothing without you. Lord, we cannot succeed without the angels of heaven on the earth. Yes. Yes. Therefore, tonight we come to listen to the prophetic words and insight and oracles that you have uttered from heaven to us. Amen. We are asking you tonight to confront the world and to confront us in a way that we've never seen you before. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, let's begin. We go straight. So, where did we start? Number... Number five, God Almighty began to dictate to me and I began to dictate to the administrator. It took us several hours for us to finish this. And we have been looking at it piece by piece. God began to talk to me and said to me, a wind is coming. A wind is coming. Excuse me, please. Just a minute. There we go. Then we got it here. All right. There we go. One of the things that I've learned in ministry, one of those things that I've learned in ministry that has been of tremendous help to me is how to dictate, how to accept how to go with the flow of the living spirit of the living God. How, when angels appear to you, either in visible form or visible form, how to entertain them. I am here tonight to share with you in depth from tonight, I begin to share with you in depth. I want us as quickly as possible to be able to finish this on or before Easter. Because I'm beginning to feel in my spirit of a new awakening, a new birth of something bigger than myself, bigger than yourself, bigger than your nation. Back in September, I began to talk about many plane crashes on earth. They are in the prophecies that God gave me. Now, I'm not going to deviate from what we are to do tonight. Let's go straight. 
God has been speaking to me that there is a wind that is coming. See what he says. Without this wind, nothing rises. Nothing rises. There's nothing that goes up. If you are struggling to become somebody on the earth, because your family has no name, you yourself have no name, you have no money, you've been struggling in life, you need this wind. Because without this wind, no nation truly will rise and stand. No corporation, no human being. See, let me say this very strictly. God has told me to tell the world that the world in which we live is not smarter than himself. You are not smarter than God and you will never be. Neither will your family, neither will, 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 will your nation. No matter how great they are in science and technology, they cannot rise and stand. You are going to see it further as I begin to talk more about it. Without this wind, nothing rises and also nothing goes down. No matter how tough, whatever rises of its own and challenges God and God's people, no matter how great and tall it is, tonight the Lord is telling me to tell whatsoever, however, wherever, that he will bring the mighty down. He will bring the mighty down. The mighty ones are going to be pulled down. And how are they going to be pulled down? By the move of the wind. This is the wind that creates Without this wind that God is about to send, nothing will be created. Nothing that is going to be worth it, that is going to stand for a long time, will be created without this wind. This is the wind that creates. This is the wind that makes things to rise and stand. This is the wind that makes things to come down and fall and perish and cease to be in existence. People of God, go through human history and you will see what this wind has done. Please, if I'm speaking too fast, tell me to slow down because I'm looking at the timer while I'm speaking. I can always break and we start again. Please, if you don't understand the way I speak, with my African British accent, please let me know so that I can slow down for you so that you will get everything I'm saying. Okay. okay. If you want things to be created, things that are going to be of high value, quality, it is this wind that is going to make it happen. It is the wind that creates. It is the wind that makes things to rise and stand and can also make things. This wind will come upon anything that has been set up against God and blow it down. The Bible speaks of the Philistines capturing the Ark of the Covenant. And they took the Ark of the Covenant to the, to the, to the shrine, uh, the temple of their own gods. And they came back in the morning, their gods were all blown down. The wind came into the temple of their gods and said, this is an insult, and blew it all down. And the heads and the arms of those things were cut off. The wind that makes things to cease to be, the wind that creates. It is, it is also the wind that makes things it makes things to go out of existence, as I've just said already. This is the wind, whatever has spoken and said, I will never get out of existence. For example, if you have a world leader who is nothing by nature, if you have a world leader 
who has decided that he is the, the Alpha and the Omega of the world, please tell him that there is a prophet of God in the United States who says the wind is coming. Because the wind will make humans to go out of existence. Let me tell you what the wind will do. The wind will do what happened to some rulers in the Middle East and some rulers in Africa and some rulers in the East, East Eastern Europe, etc. And even in the Western, even in Western Europe. Because when the wind come, even their effigy, their status, it will all be blown down because the wind will enter human beings and cause them to blow down and tear down everything that has been put up against the innocent will of human beings and the perfect will of the living God. That's what the wind does. So go through history, you will see. Go through history, you will see it. I have, this is not a boasting, I'm simply glorifying God. I have, I have cooperated with God and prayed for the wind to visit some countries and it removed their leaders. The Almighty is my witness, what I'm telling you. I have asked for the wind to go through some countries a year, two years, three years ago and it removed them one way or the other. Some of them died through sickness, etc. That's why there are only two people I fear in this world. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Edekai Mary. And what he does through Edekai Mary, that's it. Because there are things that I said in the morning when I wake up, it's already happening. And that's why I spend time to watch my own video. Let me not deviate, let me continue. This is the wind that is waiting for both the righteous and the wicked when they leave their bodies. Okay? When they leave their bodies through death. It carries the wicked to hell and they cannot stop this wind. And it floats the righteous, it floats the righteous <laughs> to heaven. And they don't even know how they arrived. Did you hear that? See, God tried to explain this thing to us. This is the same wind when a human being leaves the earth, depart the earth. We call it death. But the Bible for us Christians, we call it, we call it going back home, going to our Father's kingdom, where we belong. For the world, it is death. For us, it is the continuation of the real life, the real life. When people leave this earth, that's the wind that carries them. For the wicked, that wind carries them straight to hell. They cannot say no. I'm telling you how it happens when people leave the earth, when they leave their bodies. When people die, they do not just die. They are real, the real person, which is a spirit, leaves with your entire mind. Your mind doesn't go to the grave. I'm just letting you know, when you die, your soul, that is your mind, does not die. Your mind is in your spirit. Your spirit takes your mind with it and you leave. You still remember everything you've done on earth. Every face, you still remember everything. What goes back to the soil is your physical body. Because it's just a home. So I don't know why some people are afraid of death. I'm not. I'm not. Immediately you die on the earth, you leave this earth. You go back to join your ancestors, as the Bible calls it, 
that is the righteous ancestors or you go to join the wicked ancestors in hell and to join the devils in hell it is the wind that carries your spirit is waiting for you it will carry you and by the time you know it you don't even know how you leave your body that's the work of the wind of God and it carries you out you start to float if you are a wicked person you see yourself on the way to hell and you cannot say no it's a wind that will continuously blow you towards hell there is no way you can say no if you think you are very strong on the earth the day that death comes for you you cannot say no to this wind because it is this wind that will take you to hell it is this same wind that will blow you out of your body and by the time you know it you realize that you are being followed on both sides by two angels and you are floating in the air this wind is taking you zoom you are you, you're going and you see yourself going through the dark planet the dark planet is the second is the second heaven I don't know why we even call it second heaven, it's the second sky. Because it's not a heaven. Where devil dwell is no heaven. So I don't know why some people call it second heaven. Except they are using King James English, Elizabethan or Victorian English. You pass through, it's a very dark planet. It's the home of thieves and robbers who steal and terminate your prayer and want to stop your packages from coming from heaven. That's their home. You see yourself flying above it. And everybody on that planet clears for you. They stand at attention and salute. They understand. They lost, you gain. And they because when they see the real angels coming, they all flee. And you see yourself passing. Shoo, you're going. You're flying at the speed beyond the sound and light. That's the wind that does that job. And you can't stop flying to heaven. That's the same wind that took Jesus up. And he began to go very fast up into the sky. A cloud. The Bible talks about it as a cloud. A wind cloud, a cloud wind. People of God, let me tell you, we are in for a treat. A real sweet, happy treat. While we are on earth and when we will be in heaven. And remember that we will all come back to the earth. Because this is our home. Remember that. When the new heaven and new earth are created. There will be no difference between heaven and earth. Because the earth will become what it was supposed to be. A nice, beautiful place. So I'm just letting you know what this wind will do. Don't worry about people who tell you, I don't care whether I go to heaven or hell. When they see that wind come for them, nobody will tell them that they've made the biggest mistake on earth by not accepting Jesus as their king, as their master, as their God. So forget about people who are quarreling and disputing, writing books about whether God exists, God doesn't exist, whether Jesus is real or is not real. When death comes for them, they will know whether he's there or not. I am telling you what I'm telling you because I have experienced these things. Anything you see me preaching, in fact, I don't preach. I normally teach or I normally minister by revelation as the Holy Ghost lead me. And I'm a shepherd. I normally just shepherd. And this, are, this is part of how I shepherd. So I'm not a preacher. Anything you see me tell you, I'm telling you because I've experienced it. It's not because somebody told me. It's not because the church told me. No, it's because I have experienced it. I'm not telling you anything that I've not experienced. So when you see me talking about witchcraft, know that I've met them face to face. If you hear me talking about the messengers, the occult, the this, the that, know that I know them. Know that I've been there. I told a guy I'm going to his village. He's from the Cameroon. I live in Wichita Council, but I told him that I'm taking him by the spirit 
God is going to take two of us to his to where he was born. Because that's where the battle that he's fighting in America, the real battle is coming from the outside. It's coming from his village in Cameroon. And in the night, we went there with him. And I began to describe his village. He was shocked. I began to tell him about his village. I've done it to many people in Cameroon, Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya. Tell me where you were born and I will take you there. We will go there. You think witches know anything? They are copying us Christians. These are your rights. You allow them to, to, to perform magic, whereas we are sons and daughters of miracles. And they are making millions of dollars through all this. All this crazy stuff that are that are that are that are second class, that are fake. I don't care whether I go to heaven. I don't care whether I go to hell. Just wait. Till the wind come for you, you will know. This wind does not depend on you. When God sends this wind, this wind doesn't depend on you. You depend on it. Ha 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 ha! <laughs> in another word Jesus told me that this wind of God does not need you it doesn't need your help it does not need your help you depend on it more than it depends on you you depend on this wind more than this wind depend on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Could you could you imagine Jesus while he was on the earth depended on this wind? Without this wind, Jesus will not have become a baby in the belly of Mary. Without this wind, Jesus could not have been involved in spreading the good news and in performing miracles. He depended on this wind. The wind does not depend on you. You depend on it. This wind is the enemy of the wicked and the friend of the righteous. Are you getting it? Amen. This wind is the enemy of the wicked. Because when it comes for them, they begin to curse the wind. When this wind comes for the wicked, it leaves them with nothing. Can I share something with you? Every natural disaster is not natural. That's all I can tell you. Every natural disaster, there is many of them, there is nothing natural about it. Many of them are actually supernatural disasters. <laughs> Please write it down for me. We are going to call natural disasters, earthquake, bad wind, tornadoes, tsunami, thunder and lightning that is killing people. Name it. Hurricane. They are all natural. It is when the cold wind meets the warm, 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 warm wind, the warm water meets the cold water, blah, blah, blah. We, we have... We have natural terminology and grammar and scientific theories 
for all of the <laughs> we begin to talk about it how this me this is a small blown wind that came from the Sahara Desert blew and become a big wind and turned into hurricane blah 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 is natural really if it is natural why haven't we find a natural way to stop it and it kept coming to kill people, to destroy houses, pull down the whole city. Yes, we say it's natural. Ha ha ha! Doesn't make sense to me. Vadim, I don't know whether it makes sense to you. <laughs> Christine, I don't know whether natural disaster is natural for you, Lisa. I don't know whether it's natural to you. My friend Jennifer, ha ha ha, my friend Andrew, the rest of you, for me, we should be calling it, many of them should be called supernatural disaster. Amen. Did you listen to when those guys attacked Moses? They spoke against Moses, spoke against God. Didn't you hear what happened in the Bible? God told the earth, if you don't know, if you didn't know it, those in the wicked kingdom knows that water is a living spirit. So people who are Hindus are not stupid to worship the river Ganges. They know what you don't know. That river is alive. It talks. There is somebody who lives in that river. There is a kingdom in that water. Ha <laughs> ha! There is a kingdom there. You see this physical earth that we are walking, this soil that we are walking on every day. We build our house here. We drive our car on it. We do everything here. This earth is a goddess. It's alive. It's alive. Big time. It talks. It hears. Go and read what the Bible says when Cain killed Eva. The Bible says that the earth was the first to gossip that incident to God. The earth, he told God that blood has been shed on it and he doesn't like the shedding of blood. The earth doesn't like wickedness. That's why the Bible says, the creation is waiting for the revelation of the sons of the Most High God. Even this earth is waiting to be redeemed. Who are going to redeem the earth? You and I. Go and read the Bible. It's all there. These are no fake. These are no history. These are reality. The Bible is reality in written form. Please write that down. The Bible is reality drama in written form. Hallelujah! you remember? God told the earth, open up. Moses told everyone who were living near the camp of all those bad guys who spoke evil against God and against him. Say, everyone whose hands are clean, leave their camp, leave their tent, leave their houses, go away from them because something is about to happen. And everybody began to leave them. They left them there. What next did we see? The earth, there was an earthquake around the houses, the tents of all those wicked people. Even their children, their innocent children and wife that didn't know what their husband were doing, paid a price for it. The animals that did not, didn't know any wrong, they all paid a price for it. There was a sudden earthquake around where those people were. Sudden earthquake happened. You are talking of natural disaster. An earthquake happened immediately. And the earth opened and swallowed every one of them, including their homes and everything they had was swallowed and taken to hell straight. 
Read it again in the Bible. And then the head closes itself as though nothing has happened. Archaeologists need to begin to dig. They need to begin to dig to find out these things because these things are reality. They have happened, really. 